Hey guys, what's up? Alright, so in this video what we're going to talk about is React. And React is a new JavaScript client-side framework which is developed by the Facebook guys. Normally I'm a, a Google fan, but I've tried Angular and I've also given React a shot. And um, so far I really like React. I'll pull it up here. Um, what the web seems to be headed towards is having the entire web page be just a bunch of reusable components, um, standalone components that are uh, all wrapped together and um, don't have any sort of reliance on anything else. And um, that's ultimately what Google is trying to do with their Polymer project. Um, they envision a world where, uh, once again, you can just download a couple of different modules, and, and they might be a module for like, um, like a photo viewer or like you could have a module for a navigation similar to what we see with the jQuery plugins but um, there is some complication with the jQuery plugins which these uh, which react and polymer are trying to do away with um, like typically with um, J jQuery plugins you're having to build some initialization code you have to kind of copy and paste big chunks of HTML stuff like that so and Polymer's trying to do away with that. Polymer's not really ready for production yet. I mean, Google says that they're not. There's also a big question with Angular 1.0 and Angular 2.0. Apparently, 2.0 isn't going to be anything like 1.0, and some of that is still in the air right now. But it has a lot of the um, community concern with whether or not they want to build a big project in Angular, knowing that the entire thing is going to be uh, rewritten from scratch. And one of the speculations as well is that Angular is kind of redoing the entire um, project because of what React does really well. Um, React has been used in, by Facebook and their group for several years now and um, they've had a lot of time to try to iron out some of the deficiencies with it. One of the things that I really like with React, I created a, um, a another video on trying to integrate um, Angular with Django and um, Angular, you don't have to use the routing, but you know typically people are using the ng route module to um, build the you know single page app. And then there's also this craze where everybody seems to want to use Angular, um, even though there really isn't a point. Um, you know they're using Angular for CRUD applications with like a Node.js backend. Uh, there's really not any reason for that for a lot of cases. Um, and in my website that I'm actually messing around with right now doesn't need any of that either. Um, so the the website in question is uh, newmovies.com, which is a Django website, and n like this particular functionality here is actually all just custom rolled um, JSON being returned from the back end, and then I'm using JavaScript um, to paginate and everything. Um, that's besides the point. But React could make something like this a little bit easier because I could have the entire pager be one component. Um, you know that makes a, a call to the back end API that returns some JSON and you know basically I can make this self-contained if you looked at the source on this particular page I mean this would be a nightmare to debug I wrote this a couple months ago I mean you see this uh, nightmare of data here that it's uh, interpreting and honestly I you know I I would be able to look at it and refamiliarize myself with it pretty quickly but the bottom line is that um, you, you want to make these things self-contained so that there's not a bunch of um, not a bunch of uh, stuff tied to a particular setup and stuff like that so that's the best way I can explain it so that being said with react and um, Django one other thing with react that's really good is that it handles the view like it doesn't care what your models look like and what your back end looks like or what your database looks like or anything or whether or not you're using Ruby on Rails or Django or node or ASP it doesn't matter um, and that's really what I like about it because a lot of people say, oh, everything's going all JavaScript, but I kind of like the fact that I can continue to have my Django backend, my Django authentication, have Django handle the initial page request, and then have everything else be rendered by React or, or have you know Django templates um, render part of the page and and then have you know React do a lot of the back or the a lot of the uh, manipulation of the page on the client side. So there's no reason why. Um, you know, React can't be this awesome project because really, I mean, I, th I think it can be. To get started, um, what you would want to do is you want to download React. You're going to get a standalone JavaScript file. So if we look over at my editor here, um, this is in the new movie site, so there's quite a bit to it. Um, 
So I apologize for that. But you can see that in here I have uh, react.js, which is here. So you're going to just get uh, a big React file. I don't have the minimized version. I wanted to keep it unminimized for debugging purposes. And then you also have this JSX transform, and this is probably the biggest pain in the ass when it comes to dealing with React at the moment. Um, number one, usually I use Visual Studio for my editor, but Visual Studio doesn't have any support for JSX because JSX um, is just a JavaScript notation, but it's used by React, and it's similar to XML, kind of similar to like um, XAML and uh, WPF or even probably you know the XML they use in like uh, Android development so you know you build your entire um, component in these uh, XML style syntax which is JSX and it just makes things easier so I've been told and I'm no React expert or anything I'm actually just getting started with it all that JSX is the way to go even though you can do raw JavaScript most of the tutorials and things out there are going to be for the JSX syntax so it's probably best just to bite the bullet and, and get JSX working for you and then um, as we move into the future you're gonna see more and more editors supporting it so that being said PyCharm which is what I have pulled up here doesn't support it uh, at least not my version um, the so what ends up happening is the only thing I could get was uh, this sublime editor and I've never actually used this I've heard a lot about it, it looks really pretty and like the syntax and everything uh, but I'm using this sublime text version 3 and I followed um, these exact instructions right here to download uh, Sublime, or I'm, not, I'm sorry, I downloaded uh, yeah, Sublime Text 3, and then I followed the instructions on this package manager. Well, all I had to do is uh, pull up the console and then paste this code in there. And then um, I followed these instructions here to add React. So now I use this Sublime Text and any JavaScript file that gets opened, it's going to interpret it as React, and it actually has code completion and uh, syntax highlighting and stuff like that. So the bottom line is, it's kind of a bitch. It's kind of a big hoop to jump through, and you're like, why do I do that? But React is really cool, I think, and I'm hoping it'll pay off. So you can see down here, it's JavaScript JSX. So uh, as I get into the tutorial here, we'll be able to to look at that, um, and then I'll continue to do other Django development inside of PyCharm. Alright guys, um, so that is uh, the main setup here. So let's look at the um, the base page that I have. And the base page, actually it's not going to be the base page, it's going to be, I have this, um, the module's called Gossip. I, I, it's kind of a bad name, I don't even know, I didn't even give it much thought, but it, it's kind of this new interactive type of thing that I'm trying to add to new movies, and it's really just in a diagnostic phase right now. Um, new movies is really just a playground for me. Um, it gets some you know decent traffic and I apologize to any visitors that go there because I'm constantly changing it and breaking things and leaving things in a state of disarray but uh, anyway that's not the point it's really just a playground for saying hey I you know I can put together websites or whatever and I, I kind of just build on top of it I hope to one day make it a lot better than it is one though um, but anyway so you have uh, react JS which I'm bringing in to the head of the page and then you have this JSX transformer and that's part of what you're going to download from React and what that does is when we're developing our JSX page um, it actually gets compiled and turned into native JavaScript because that's all it is um, so you would not use this in a production site what you would end up doing is taking all of your JSX code you'd run it through a, a compiler to get this you know the the minified perfect version of it in JavaScript and then you would use that as your um, your page so the JSX transformer once again is just temporary um, to play around with so the next thing I have here is you can see I have a script where it says text JSX and the reason why the JSX needs to be there is because this is what's going to tell the JSX transformer to take anything in here and then turn it into that native JavaScript um, that works with react so a lot of hoops but once you're once you get that out of the way then um, development should be pretty smooth All right, guys. So um, let me go ahead and in the next uh, in the next segment here, we're going to go ahead and get into actually developing inside of this um, JavaScript page, which is going to be our JSX. 
All right, guys, so let's go ahead and um, end this Sublime Editor. Hopefully you got all that figured out and squared away. Um, let's go ahead and start messing around here. Um, now, everything in React is a component, so you have to, it's, and it all just gets printed out as one particular box. So if I can explain it any better here, let me just give an example. The bottom line is a component is going to be like a, a present, right? And it's a wrapped up gift, and inside of that present, can be an infinite number of you know sub presents and um, and that present could be you know uh, like I said it could be a video player it could be a photo gallery it could be some sort of stock market ticker or something like that but that is essentially how you have to look at it but ultimately there's going to be you know one parent wrapper and that's going to be the first um, object that you create with React. And what we need is we need a div tag on our actual HTML page, which we're going to see here, which is this gossip.html. We need an ID that we can actually plant that that present, that module that I just explained into. And that's what I have here. So I just have a simple div ID gossip. And I'll just zoom in so you guys can see a little better. So it's just a simple div ID gossip. That's all we got. All right, so let's go ahead and create our first component, and we'll just call it variable gossip, and I'll, I'll call it box since this is the main, you know, present thing that I was describing. So we'll say React create class, and then we're going to say render function return. And then any anything inside this return statement is going to be the actual HTML. Um, it can be HTML if you want. It's a different form of HTML since um, JSX is just JavaScript. You're um, you're going to write it in a different way. So like if I'm giving, uh, I'm going to give a div, and we'll say um, class instead of class uh, normal like div class, um, it's class name. So you're using attributes that JSX uh, and React understand and can turn it into actual. You know HTML when the JavaScript compiles. So we'll say div class name, and we'll just say our test for right now. And then inside here we'll say hello, my my not really fans. You guys aren't my fans. Hello, my viewers. I wish I had fans. Um, anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and close off that div. And that's really it. Now we need to actually, um, and you're gonna do this once for every component. Um, and remember, a component is going to be, you know, it can be big, it can be small, but ultimately a component is just one wrapped up GIF. And um, you're going to have to then uh, render that GIF. So you're always going to do this at least once in your component. React.render, um, probably shouldn't be a space here. And then um, we're going to go ahead and just say in this XML syntax that I was telling you about with uh, with JSX, you're going to say gossip box, which is the name of the class that we just um, created. And my editor wants to, to put that in there for me, which is pretty cool. I've never actually used this editor before. I really like it so far. Um, a document dot uh, get element by ID. And if you remember, the element that we're going to be assigning this to was uh, gossip, is the name of the ID that I showed you guys in the template. Um, May not need a semicolon there. I'm not 100% sure, but let's just go ahead and um, just test what we have here. Yeah, it looks like the uh, semicolon is not needed, so I'm not 100% familiar with the JSX syntax, but you definitely don't want the semicolon there because it is throwing an error. So let me try that again. All right, so you can see that. Um, the JSX transformer, which is the script that we're not going to use in production, but we're only using it right now because it is um, for development purposes. It takes that JSX document and then it just turns it into HTML. So when we view and inspect element, um, this was all done for us by React. So when we look at the um, the element here, you can see data, React ID, uh, our test, blah, blah, blah. Now you're probably wondering what the big deal is because there's really no big deal about that at all. Anybody can do that with standard HTML and all that stuff. So um, it, it does a, a lot more than that. Like if we went ahead and we create a different class, we'll just say a variable um, gossip um, we'll say gossip list equals react dot create class.
render function return and here we'll give it a, a div ID or whatever div uh, we'll do a class name again another test Why does it keep doing that? I don't like that. All right, so we close that off, and instead of uh, the gossip box rendering um, straight HTML here, what we can do is we can actually um, just give it the gossip list that we just created. And then when we render it, so now we have like two items that comprise of our component and we're just rendering the one component you know it all wrapped up the parent because it, it's um, you, you look at it from like a top-down structure so this is almost like if you're dealing with HTML this is like your uh, HTML document and this is just like you know your header or something like that um, but then it all just gets wrapped up and delivered to whatever ID that you need to assign it to so now when we run this, you can see gossip list is comprised of this, and then this is just saying return gossip list, and then this is saying assign this entire thing over to um, this ID. So when we view the page, you can see how there's another test. You look at this, and it has our class name that we assigned to it. And then um, once more, let's go ahead and just copy something similar to this. So we'll copy this and... And then we'll change this and we'll just call this um, gossip item. And then just for an example purpose, we'll say this sucks. And gossip list will then instead return a um, gossip item and a gossip or no, this sucks. Okay, if we look at the page, it um, looks like we might have an error. Okay. And the reason why is it's actually returning um, two items, but it needs to return one. So we need to contain that inside like a, um, a div. We'll just say div uh, class name our container. That way it's returning one item with um, a couple of children in it. So um, that is one uh, caveat then is that you have to have a parent. So the return should only be returning one item. And it can have you know, one item with an infinite number of children or whatever. Like in this case it has two. Uh, and ultimately this is just returning the one which is being assigned um, to this ID. So this is just a, a quick uh, intro into how to use React. Um, this isn't so much to do with uh, with Django since React just kind of handles the view. Um, so I mean I guess it, it is somewhat to do with Django in the fact that I, I showed you how I did it with Django but um, React is not dependent on any sort of uh, back-end server-side stack at all so it's what I really like about it. It's number one thing to be honest with you. Um, and I have uh, a lot of work I need to do in order to get better with React, and I plan on making some more tutorials as I, I start learning more about it. Uh, but anyway, this is a, just a brief introduction, so I appreciate you guys watching, and thank you, and please subscribe. Bye.